I get into. My training is geared toward you. Yes, the one that is hopefully watching this video right now. My training is geared to your average, everyday citizen that is either ready to start carrying, been carrying and want to get a better understanding of close quarter tactics, things like that. What's up everybody, Chris with South Carolina Gun School and today I wanted to take a minute to talk about training. All right, and the reason I wanted to do this and talk about this is to try to help people understand what we do, and not just here at South Carolina Gun School, but a lot of your other places around the country that do what we do. All right, and what I'm talking about here is I think a lot of people get confused when they look at some of the things that I offer and automatically start to think that it's for police or military or contractors or security personnel or some type of high level former spec ops operator. All right, that is not anything remotely close to what I do and to what a lot of other people do around the nation here. People like Pivotal Defense in Minnesota and No Other Choice in Georgia and TAC Response in Tennessee. Now, so there are some, uh, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me change that a little bit because there are some things that TAC Response does uh, for security personnel, contractors, and things like that. So they do get into a little bit of that. But that's not a lot of what I get into. My training is geared toward you. Yes, the one that is hopefully watching this video right now. My training is geared to your average, everyday citizen that is either ready to start carrying, been carrying, and want to get a better understanding of close quarter tactics, things like that. So don't think that you're gonna come into my class and you're gonna be in there with a bunch of Leos or former military or things like that. Now, is there a chance there could be some of them in the class? Yes, because I've had military veterans, former law enforcement, current law enforcement come in and take my classes. But that doesn't mean that's going to be everybody in that class. The bulk of my classes is the person that you look at every day in the mirror, the average everyday citizen that is ready to get more proficient, more confident, and a better understanding of handguns, rifles, whatever, at close quarter tactics and self-defense. So please stop thinking that when you go in and you see my classes that that's what it is. You are going to find when you get there and you sign up and you come into my class that is somebody that is just like you that is just wanting to learn more and become better with their firearm. Now, if somebody comes to me and they're looking for law enforcement specific training or military specific training or things like that, there are plenty of people in this industry that I know that I will send you to. But I am just here, and this is why I did this, this is why I do this, because I want the average, everyday person to be ready and confident and comfortable in carrying their firearms so they can protect themselves and their family. So please, please, please do not think you've got to be some high-level operator to come in and take one of my training classes because you do not. But that's also why a lot of us sit and talk about making sure you vet your instructors. 
Because I'll be honest, I don't care. When I'm me personally, when I'm going to take a class and I'm starting to look at somebody, I could give two shits less about what kind of certifications you got hanging on your wall. I want to see, are you going and training yourself? Not meaning you going down to the range and training yourself. I mean, are you going and taking classes yourself? Me personally, you know, I at least try to get four, four to six classes in a year. Now, I understand some people's budgets can't do that. You know, that's why I've, there's a bunch that I offer. I've got all day classes all the way down to two hour classes. I do them through the weekend, all the weekends. I leave spots open if you want to do a private class. But take, please take something. Please go out. Your permit is not your end. Your permit class is your beginning. The training should never end. Just because I teach this doesn't mean I don't go out and take training. And I've gone in and taken some of the most basic of the basic classes. There's nothing wrong with that. I might find something, a way they're teaching it that might work better. Now, I'm not going out taking classes trying to steal ideas. I've got my way of doing things as well as other people. If it's something that I would like to use, I'm going to go up and I'm going to ask them, hey, do you mind if I use that? And I'm going to give them credit for it when I talk about it in my class. Now, I have done that. But don't go cheap on your training. Don't not take training at all. So what I mean is, is if somebody's doing an all day class and they're offering it for 50 bucks, you might need to take a look at that instructor. I'm not saying you gotta sink a lot of money into it, but you're gonna get out of it what you put into it. Just like your cell phone. I bet you're not going to go buy a $100 cell phone. I'm willing to get the majority of y'all are probably looking at this video from probably a $800 to $1,500 cell phone. And I always tell people when they start talking about this, what is your life worth? I even did a video talking about that. What is your life worth? Mine is worth way more than 40 bucks or 50 bucks. My life is worth way more than that damn cell phone that I'm making payments on, like probably the majority of us are, that probably retails at $1,100, God only knows. Most of your smartphones are up in that $800 to $1,500 range, depending on what you go with. Most of your tablets are up in that range, if not more. Your computer is up in that range, if not more. Especially if you got a damn Apple. But you're going to spend that on a phone, but not spend a quarter of that, or maybe half of that, on some training with your firearms? Where are your priorities at? And don't sit there and say, oh, I got 50 guns. Okay, great. Can you handle all 50 guns effectively and efficiently? Probably not. I'm not saying you shouldn't add guns to your collection, but what you should do is get you a good handgun, get you a good rifle. Yeah, shotgun, I'll leave that up to you. Kind of depends on the person. Some people like them, some people don't. Home defense, this, that, subject for another day, but good handgun, good rifle, get you some ammo, get you some training. And don't think you've got to be all tacked out when you come into this training class with plate carriers and duty belts and all that stuff. Hell, I don't even wear a plate carrier when I'm teaching. Now, if that's something where you're wanting to get acclimated to it, understand how it works, see what it's like, that's the perfect time to do it is in a training class. Not when you got rounds popping off at your house and you're going to go put all that stuff on for the very first time. 
But honestly, what you need, if you want to, if you want to come in, everybody's a little different with what you need. All right, but if you're going to come in and say you're going to come in and you want to take my handgun to a handgun tactics two hundred one, you need a good belt, a good holster, at least three mags. At least, well, at least two mags. Three would be best. Some mag pouches, if not, all right. Mag, mag pouches. Well, so listen, let's let me rewind that because really mag pouches could be optional there because you could use pockets. Some people have done that. I'll show you how to, and I will teach you how to use your pockets and everything. But to bare minimum, what you need to come in, take my handgun tactics to a one. One, your gun. Two, a good belt. Three, a good holster. And then at least two mags. And then whatever the round count is for that particular class. But that's really all you need. So don't think, again, that you need the duty belt, the plate carrier, the chest rig, all right, whatever. Especially for the handgun. Like I said, your handgun, a good belt, a good holster, some mags, and then at least two mags and whatever the round count is. I would really say three, but we're going bare minimum. That's all you need. That is literally all you need. So if you've been thinking, oh, I'm not going to take this because I don't have my duty belt, or I'm not going to take that because I don't have my chest rig or my plate carrier, stop it. Just stop it. I just gave you what four things you need. So again, a good handgun, a good belt, a good holster, and at least two magazines at minimum. And then whatever the round count might show. That's all you need. Of course, now eyes, ears, that's, that's kind of self-explanatory. At least I would hope so. So maybe I need to, let's, let's, change, let's change that. So really we're going to have, we're going to have our round count, whatever it is for the class. We're going to have our handgun. We're going to have at least two mags. We're going to have a good belt. We're going to have a good holster. All right. And then eyes and ears. That's it. That's bare minimum on what you need. Now, with the rifle, you need a good sling for your rifle. At least two mags. Eye protection, ear protection, and then whatever your round count is. Because I can still show you how to work with your pockets. If you have a plate carrier or chest rig or anything like that, so be it. But you don't need to have all that. So stop thinking you need all that before you come in and start your training. Because what you'll do is you'll come in with the bare minimum and you'll be like, oh, well, you'll start to, you'll talk to other people in the class. You'll probably ask me some questions. And then you'll start kind of seeing some things that you want to do, how you want to do it. And now you can start working on that. I've made changes to my gear from taking training and all kind of different things based off of different scenarios I've ran across taking training. <laughs> You're probably never going to keep that same setup all the freaking time. Now, the, the, as it grows, you might have, all right, this belt is, say I'm going to do a handgun class. This belt is I'm going to do a rifle class because I've got my chest rig or my plate carrier with me. There's all kind of different ways to set this stuff up. But again, you don't need all that. I just went through everything, bare minimum of what you need for a handgun and a rifle. Shotgun, kind of the same thing. Your shotgun, whatever the round count is, eye and ear protection, and a good sling. And when I say a good sling, I don't mean a good hunting sling. I mean, a, you need a, a tactical style sling. There is a little bit of difference there. If you have questions, reach out to me. I can help you out with that stuff. But please don't think what I'm doing is that high level operator stuff or even that mid level operator stuff. I have these training set up for the person that you're going to go and look at in the mirror or your neighbor that you're going to talk to or your family member you're going to talk to or friend or whatever. This is all for the average 
concealed carry person. Now, I do periodically run some ladies-only classes, but ladies, please don't be scared to come in and be in a class with men as well, too. I've had plenty of ladies come into my class, and by the end of the day, they're right in the mix with everybody else. So don't be intimidated thinking it's going to be mainly men. Now, could there be a chance you're the only lady? Yes, it could be. But hey, there's always that possibility that you're going to be the better shooter. So don't be scared to come in and take a class with other people. If you want to start out private, I've got those options available. But I'll tell you like everybody else will tell you, come into a full class, or I shouldn't say a full class, come into a, a class with other people. Don't ever be scared, don't ever be intimidated because what you're gonna find out is the majority of people that are there are in the same shoes that you're in. That is, I wanted to do this because I want to, I'm not trying to get your money, I ain't trying, if I wanted to get rich, I'd have stayed in the corporate world. I want people to be able to defend themselves and their family, and that's why I do this. So please, people, get out and get some training. If it's something where you can't fill, pay the full amount, a lot of companies, a lot of places now are working with companies where you can make payments. If you just reach out and talk to me, I can set that up for you myself. I mean, you can make payments and still be able to come in and get the training. But this, this needs to start being higher up on your priorities. The C, again, the CWP is not the end, that is the beginning. I'll be honest, I don't even know if there really is an end. I haven't stopped. Like I said, I still take training. I still go down and practice on my own. I haven't stopped. Well, I stopped to do the video, but yeah, you know what I mean. Another thing is do some dry fire stuff, practice, but reinforce that with some professional training because there might be something that we're going to see that you don't see because you're just doing, you're just there doing it. To reinforce some of that practice and training, dry fire practice and live fire practice that you're already doing with some form of training to help you get better. It's definitely helped me get better. It's helped me be a better shooter, a better instructor, just a better person all the way around and being able to know what I need to do to protect myself and my family. We're going to push you. I'm going to push you. Most of the instructors that I know are going to push you. They're going to get that adrenaline up. They're going to get that stress up. They're going to let you see what it's like in a real life situation. So I've had people break down on my range and start crying just because it gets overwhelming. And I'm not doing it on purpose. I'm doing it so you understand the criminal ain't going to give a shit if you're crying or not. Sometimes the criminal's not even going to care if you're going to give it up and hand your phone, your wallet, or your purse over. They might shoot you anyway. I just, I hope this helps people understand that what I do and a lot of what others like me do is, is for you. Not the law enforcement officer, not the military, not the contractor, not security personnel. It can correlate over into some of that stuff. That's not what it's mainly designed to. It is, again, mainly designed for you. The person that I hope is watching this and I hope enjoyed this video that is ready to become more confident, comfortable, effective, and efficient with their firearm. So please check out my link tree. I'll have it somewhere up here. It's got all my contact information, calendar. All right, my website has a description of all of the trainings that I offer and stuff. And we also travel. So if you can't make it to us, we will come to you. But I need to make sure you understand that you're going to need a safe place to shoot. 
if it's a range or a club, you better make sure they're going to let me come in and do what I need to do because a lot of them don't. Usually when I travel, those things are already lined up that I just have to show up and set up my stuff. Or they know people that have property or places where they can go and do some of that stuff. But I hope everybody will kind of watch this in the, its entirety. I hope you'll share it and I hope you help get the word out that what we do is not for that operator. It's for the average everyday citizen. Always remember folks, if you're not shooting, you're reloading. If you're not reloading, you're fighting. If you're not fighting, you're dead. Train to live. See you on the range.